as they're talking, for Ki'imi, the dust settling comes with a familiar sensation, a clarity, and a relief, like that last sort of blowing of your nose when you're sick that clears out the congestion, and you can finally just take a real breath. And emptiness for some is often associated with despair, but for you it's the opposite a blank canvas for you to look upon with fresh eyes. And even in your soaking leather armor lends itself to a kind of levity. But just as you experienced in the northern stout hills, the feeling does not persist. Mm. The sounds of the world around you become hollow as if sort of cupping your hands over your ears. And the voice that comes through next is the same one that you've been burdened with this time. Yeah. But it's softer, more insular. And it speaks to you, you get the sense that it does so to, for itself as much as for you, sort mm -hmm. of talking its own thoughts out. Mm -hmm. I remember. Okay, okay, details, man. Name, place, how you died, what's linked us, what do you remember? What you now simply call the ruin of Ebwoods was once a town, the town of Manasami, my home, I think. And with every undead spirit put to rest, I see a clearer picture of the past. And there's a silence for a moment. Oh, okay, so I guess this didn't work. We just got to kill more dead things. Do you want to be free from my head too? What is, do you have any goals? What is your objective here? Please answer me, please. Make a persuasion check. Sound of persuasion. Natural 1. No, not And instead of sort of responding to your question, he just continues to talk, okay. his thoughts sort of tumbling out, becoming your own. There in Manasami lived a husband and a wife. Simple folk. Good, but simple. Not schooled, possessing no artisan skills, and most importantly, largely unacquainted with magic. You also must understand that at this time, centuries ago, necromancy was universally reviled, not understood as it is today as something that can be constructive, benign. Drawing your power from the will of the dead rather than through their suffering. But no, in the time of Manasami, any hint of necromantic arts was a sign of great evil. No questions. No compromise. This husband and wife, while taking an evening stroll, happened by a cemetery where the caretaker was tending to the graves. In a lonely line of work, he developed a tendency of muttering to himself. And that combined with the way the moonlight struck the fountain at that very moment, made them believe that he was communicating with the dead. They did not want to accuse the man. He was a friend. But they were scared. They wrote a letter intended for an associate who was more knowledgeable in these matters, seeking their advice. But the letter was intercepted by the sheriff of the Epwoods, a man of zealous piety who, unbeknownst to them, kept very careful, prying eyes on correspondence through the courier service. Upon learning of these misdeeds, the sheriff promptly took his best men to the cemetery and cut the caretaker down where he stood. No questions. No compromise. The husband and wife were imprisoned for not reporting the crimes sooner, and... That's all I can recall. And I, you... I, uh... 
I don't know who I am in this story. Am I the husband? The caretaker? The sheriff? Well, I guess whoever you are, we're stuck together for the time being. But we're going to get ourselves out of this, okay? We're, we're going to help you remember. We're going to help you figure out who you are and, and how you died and, and how you got here. Yes. Okay? We're working together. <laughs>